Uh, just a couple of updates. You said it was 16 to 6. It is now 16 to 6. Uh, also got an update here that now WBZ is doing a 2.30 a.m. news, a 3 a.m. news, a 3.30 a.m. news, and a 3.30 a.m. news. You got out just in time. Um, really nice to be here tonight. So cool to be able to check the sports scores, get the sports scores from Mike. Mayor Menino was totally right when he said Boston sports are ionic. Yeah, you know, you can almost see Jason Veritek kicking it over there between the uprights. See it. See. It. Yeah. see. Yeah. We took a Talk whole list you. of jokes from our table to see which ones would be funny. None of them worked. Sorry about that. that so was let's the best get of the bunch. So we should get right to the awards. This is that awkward part where we don't have the envelope. Thank you. All right, here we go. Uh, this is for Outstanding Writer Program. Tim Gray, RIPBS.org. Sangeeta Lishandra, WCVB. Jason Hawkins, Connecticut Public Television. Clint Conley, WCVB. Jason Potts, WCVB. Kathy Bickermer, WCVB. Uh, and the winner is, for Outstanding Writer Program, Navy Heroes of Normandy, Tim Gray, Rhode Island Public Broadcasting.org. The Naval Order of the United States commissioned celebrated sculptor Stephen Spears of Fairhope, Alabama to design the very first U.S. Navy monument in Normandy. A half million dollar fundraising campaign was put in motion and a site on the French... Thank you, thank you. Uh, just want to thank my wife, Sheila, who uh, puts up with the trips to Normandy, France and Guadalcanal and Belgium and Luxembourg, all to pursue honoring World War II veterans who are dying at the rate of a thousand a day. I would also like to thank Jim Karpachik for being the director of photography for this project. He won early. And I would also like to thank Bill Belichick for being uh, a reviewer of all of my uh, World War II films. I know he's, he's trying to get out of here without uh, acknowledging it, but Bill, thank you very much and uh, thank you. They just told us to speak closer to the microphone. We're hoping now that anything we said earlier was not heard by anyone. That's our hope. I also learned that if you mention Bill Belichick, you get a round of applause automatically. So Bill Belichick, everybody. Yeah. Woo. It's more like it. Our next category, Outstanding Informational Instructional Program, and here are the nominees. New Hampshire Chronicle, Managing Your Woodlot, WMUR. Twisted Training, Matt Gilbert, RSN. Philanthropy, The Power of Giving, Connecticut Public Television. Chronicle, Team Moms, WCVB. Internet Insecurity, WCVB. And the Emmy goes to Connecticut Public Television, Philanthropy, the Power of Giving. Throughout the entire 19th century, Hartford was both a strong literary and commercial and social center. One of the gem cities of New England. It boasted literary figures like Lydia Sigourney, Mark Twain, Samuel Dudley Warner, and just a host of Hi, thank you so much. Um, I'd like to uh, thank Jennifer Boyd, executive producer, but especially my co-writer, uh, production assistant, and researcher, Lizzie Warren, uh, a true rising star, and uh, thank you very much. Okay, our next category is for Outstanding Sporting Event or Game, live and unedited. Here are the nominees. Paul Sox Baseball, Cox Sports, 
Boston Celtics Basketball, Comcast Sportsnet. All right, should have started earlier. <laughs> and the Emmy goes to Boston Celtics Basketball, Comcast Sportsnet. Celtics scores 27-11, first quarter over. <laughs> We're accepting on behalf of the crew, because of course, obviously, they're at the game right now. April Sylvia, Director of Programming for Comcast Sportsnet. Hi, I'm Len Mead. I'm pretty new around here, but uh, Paul, Jim, Jeff, and Andy are all busily working at the garden, so we accept it on their behalf. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Get a hold of <laughs> We have another sports score. Bruins still lost game seven. Sorry. That was low. Bad. Next category, Outstanding Writers Short Form, and here are the nominees. Russ Nelligan, WCVB. James Bartone, WPRI. John Marshall, WPXT. Charles Armstrong, WSBK and WBZ. And the Emmy goes to John Marshall, WPXT. All right, Frank, so you're the Moxie man. Uh, maybe tell us, what, is it, what does Moxie do for you when you drink this? What, what, is it, what does it fill you with? Very invigorating. It is. Very refreshing. To the untrained palate like myself, what can people... Uh, how would you walk them through this process? On the first taste, you may want to spit it out and throw it away. Don't. On the... Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, hi, I am not John Marshall. John Marshall uh, has taken a leave from our station, uh, and he is currently traveling around the world with his family for six months, and he's an excellent writer, as you can see in that piece. Um, but his blog, if you all want to check it out, it is uh, halfayearaway.blogspot.com, and this is for John. Thank you. Being a Mainer for seven and a half years, I love Moxie. I don't know if you saw it in there. Uh, the next uh, category tonight is Outstanding Team Coverage, and here are the nominees. The passing of Senator Edward M. Kennedy, New Center 5 at 6 p.m., WCVB. Remembering Alice, WTIC. Uh, and the Emmy goes to Remembering Alice, WTIC. Smart, witty, caring. Three words to describe not only a remarkable woman, but also a Fox 61 colleague. She was always wonderful, and she had so much goodness within her, and she spread that goodness to every single person that she touched. A loving mother who's being remembered tonight as a special person and a special... Well, this is uh, definitely a very bittersweet award for Fox 61. Um, Alice Morin worked on our assignment desk and was one of the most loved and most liked people in the newsroom. Her life ended tragically one night when she was the victim of a murder-suicide at the hands of her husband. So not only did we have to mourn a colleague and a friend, but we had to cover the news that day. And our coverage was so powerful, I remember getting email after email from viewers who said they never watched local news, but they couldn't take their eyes off of our coverage, or other emails that said, we didn't know Alice, but after watching your coverage that we felt we did, and we wish we could have met her. Well, we were all fortunate enough to both work with and know Alice, so I accept this award in the memory of Alice Morton. Thank you. The next category is Outstanding Audio, and here are the nominees. Charles Record, Cox Sports. Jack Harrington, WFXT. Richard Talmadge and Mary Lou Palumbo, 
mashbychamber.com and digital 500. And the Emmy goes to Charles Reckard, Cox Sportsnet. How would you like about three runs instead? Would that do the trick? I would do that. Uh, that and then the sandwich. <laughs> I'm not Charles Record, but I take credit for his work tonight. Um, I want to just thank Charlie and uh, the, whatever, the committee and all that. And I'm going to go back and have some coffee. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else not Charles Record who would like to come up and say a few things? <laughs> All right, the next category tonight, Outstanding News Specialty Report, Political Government. Here are the nominees. Janet Wu, WCVB. Remembering Senator Kennedy, WFXT. Team 5 Composite, WCVB. Government Watchdog Composite, WFXT. Judge Giles. WGBH. A presidential leap. WFXT. Okay, the Ebony. The, the Ebony. The Emmy. Easy for me to say. Emmy goes to Government Watchdog Composite. WFXT. Hidden away in this unmarked office at the State House, inside room 436, we found some of former Speaker Sal DeMacy's aides last week. At least 11 members of the ex-Speaker's staff were stashed here when their boss resigned six weeks ago. And they were replaced by aides to the new Speaker, Robert DeLeo. Uh, thank you. Uh, I know Mike wanted to be here today. He's not. Uh, and the rest of the team that worked really hard on this. Not only that everybody that's mentioned in the piece, but also everybody at WFXT has made our work very easy. Thank you. Next category, Outstanding On-Camera Talent Program, Host Moderator, and the Emmys are the Emmys and nominees. Sean Tempesta, WNAC. Maria Inojosa, WGBH. Stephen Donovan, New England Sports Network. Anthony Everett, WCVB. Kelly Lewis, RSN. Sonia Baghdadi and Desiree Fontaine, WTNH. I'm a little worried about when they do the Worst Presenter Award. Um, the winner, the Emmy goes to Anthony Everett, WCVB. Tonight, the special people behind those special touches, all of them right here in Massachusetts. Their skills and artistry fill even the emptiest room with instant character. It was a great day, Mary. We're here at the Hotel Commonwealth in Kenmore Square, a beautiful view of Fenway Park behind us, and a great day over at the ballpark. You know, it's been a long... I'm Anthony Everett. I got a little shorter since we uh, were sitting at the table. Uh, he couldn't be here tonight. He asked me to thank you for the honor, thank Joe Mosdes for editing the composite. And he didn't ask me to do this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Mary Richardson retired from our show this week. And I'd love it if we could give her a round of applause. She's not here, but that would be nice. Thank you. Next category, Outstanding Historical or Cultural Feature or Segment. Here are the nominees. Trapped Under the Sea, Deer Island Tunnel Accident Survivors Recount Horror, Part 1 and 2, The Boston Globe. All Things Connecticut, Positively Connecticut Segment, Living Martyr, Connecticut Public Television, The Soiling of Old Glory, WCVB, the Faces of War, MyFoxBoston.com. 
The Survivor, The Boston Globe. Joyful Reunion, The Boston Globe.